And then in 2000, Compton PD, that had been around since 1888, ends up getting shut down completely and absorbed into Com well, into the Compton um, Sheriff's Department or no Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Correct. So this whole police force mm -hmm. kind of ceased to exist. Yep, been around 112 years, man, just gone. Right. Well, um, how crazy was that? It was. It was a shock to everyone's system, and and we had nothing. Trust me, we had nothing against the sheriff's department at all but we just wanted to keep our police department you know what i'm saying because it's been around for like i said 112 years so all since i was there in 1983 i heard every time a negotiation come up for a contract they were going oh we're going to bring in the sheriff we're going to bring in the sheriff so we've been hearing that for almost 20 years right so i'm going ah kiss my butt they're not, never going to do it but this mayor man he he was pissed off at us, so uh, he he actually did it. And he didn't he didn't ask the citizens. That's what our problem was. If the citizens said, "Okay, we're tired of Compton PD, bring in the sheriffs," I would have been. It would have set well with me. Okay, they don't want us anymore. But he didn't even ask the citizens. He's just pissed off at us, and so he just got rid of us. But didn't he claim that Compton PD was spying on him and? A yeah, a bunch of craziness. A whole bunch of craziness went on. I can't. I, that's a whole story in itself. Right. <laughs> went went on, man. But he was corrupt, and he wanted to bring his corruptness into our police department. And he got rid of a our chief and our captains who've been around for thirty years. They were good guys, man. And he got rid of them all one day, and he wanted to bring in his cronies. So our association in a nutshell said no we're not gonna we tried to fight city hall <laughs> you know the old adage you can't fight city hall mm -hmm. and that's exactly what happened man we end up losing our police department over it. okay and you became a sheriff at that point yes okay was that a big change yeah man because uh you know i'm not trying to brag or anything like that but we were when we we're experts we traveled around the country testifying on crips and bloods and we're teaching about Crips and Bloods, and we really love what we did, man. We were we were in the mix, you know, um, doing what we love to do. And then the next thing I know, I'm a, I'm a bailiff. Hmm. Nothing against bailiff, but I just really wasn't ready for it. It was like a shock to my system. And then they stuck Tim. Um, they kept Tim in the, um, the gang unit for three months, and then they, they stuck him on graveyard traffic unit in Lakewood. So we were like, oh my God, this is this is not good, <laughs> right? So it really was a shock to our system. Well, by 2006, uh, there was a biggie task force, essentially, that yeah. was run by LAPD. And both you and Blondie joined that task force? No, just Tim. I went, I lateral to a different agency. Okay. So I went to Garden Grove PD in Orange County. That's where I was a reserve, knew a lot of people. So they said, hey, come on back. They treated me good there and put me in charge of the gang unit and everything else. So, so you left Compton? I left. Completely? Yes. But Blondie actually stayed. He stayed and he got assigned to the task force. Okay, now while he's working on this task force, he ends up going to Pelican Bay and interviewing Michael Durrell. That's correct. Now, you actually provided some paperwork here of this interview. I did. What did Michael Durrell say? Michael Durrell right now, at that time, was holding a triple murder. <laughs> so he was doing... Right. So here... here life, he, yeah. or was it multiple life sentences? Pelican Bay, which is a super max. So he's in the worst possible situation, right. essentially. He wants to get out of Pelican Bay, yeah. of course. So we knew Michael Durrell's mom because she used to work for us, Carrie Durrell, sweet lady. We went, so we contact her. She sets up this interview mm -hmm. and Greg Kading and a female FBI agent and Tim, they go out to Pelican Bay to interview Michael Durrell, see what he has to say. So here you have a guy, Michael Durrell, that tried to kill us. We tried to put him away on a murder he got off on, and then we put him away for a triple murder, and we show up to interview him at Pelican Bay, right? So Greg Kading and this female detective, 
go in and with Tim, right? So they sit down and Michael drove right off the way. He disses uh, Kading and this female. He goes, I ain't talking to these fuckers. I'm only talking to blonde. Basically what he said. Okay. So Kading and the FBI agents had to go sit out in the little waiting room there with their tails between their legs for like about an hour. Right? Mm -hmm. So they weren't real happy about that. Meanwhile, Timmy interviews Michael Durow and he tells him, I, th I gave you a three page report. Yeah. And I read the report and the stuff that he tells him is the truth. Cause I was there for most of it. Cause I was, it was back. It happened when I was there at Compton. Mm -hmm. Right. So to say that Kading said statement on a different show or whatever that he just lied to Blondie's face, which wasn't true. Because after this report, they, they went back a second time three months later. This one happened in July. They went back to another prison to, to re interview him because Tim's tape didn't work too good. So we went back with a guy, not Kading, but Brian Tyndall, and they re interviewed him. And I gave a report for that. Well, it, they're in, in these statements, which I don't want to talk about because it's an open murder, but he implicates people from Death Row Records being involved in Biggie's murder, along with Southside Crips. Now, if you want to put it up, post it, that's on you, but I'm not going to say it because I don't talk about really open murders, but he, he really has a lot to say about Southside Crips being involved in Biggie's murder, along with Death Row, together. Well, right. So what I'm saying is, that you have a triple murder suspect, Michael Durow. He's not going to be a, someone that you're going to bring to court to testify. You know, you know what I'm saying? He's not, his credibility is not going to be there. But you want this guy in your back pocket, okay? Because I've interviewed hundreds of informants. That's all I did my whole career is talk to informants. And these guys are savory characters. They're gangsters. They're dope dealers. They're not going to tell you how... Three quarters of what they tell you is not going to be the truth, but it's that one part that they tell you the truth. It's my job to go out and investigate and see if he's telling the truth or not. You know what I'm saying? So just to kiss him off and say, hey, he lied to us, so we're not going to use him. We're not going to help him because he lied to us one time. It's just not good police work. And that's what they did here. That's what Kading did. Here's a the guy. They could have helped him out, got him out of Pelican Bay, Put him in a different prison, prison, and kept him on the side. Man, you can always go back to this guy and see if he's telling the truth. Get information from him. It's your job as an investigator to take what he gives you and investigate it to see if it's true or not. So just to say, just to say that he lied and that's it. I just I don't agree with what he did. Well, in this paperwork. Michael DeRoe actually implicates Reggie Wright Jr. Well, not to say it's true or not, but Reggie Wright Jr.'s name is actually in this paperwork. I'm not going to say anything about, if you want to post it, that's on you, but okay. I'm not going to say anything about, about that. I gave, I gave you the paperwork, so what you do with it is on you, but I don't talk about the open murders, and I don't want to implicate anybody without you know, just cause.